I spent an entire year focusing on just one word, and this is what happened. In um, all reality, I, I thought um, I focused on the thing that I was struggling with the most, the thing that I realized that I needed more than anything, um, and I, I decided to focus on that. It became a theme of my year, and it really it led to what has become the best year of my life. And I really believe that it had much to do with this one prayer, this one characteristic that I was seeking to understand. And today, I want to share with you some of the findings that I found of what happened when I was actually able to dis determine what would be the theme of the year 2020 for me, which was the first year that I had, I had chosen a word to describe or a word to focus on to try to understand for myself. And I do believe and I hope that this will be an encouragement for you and help give you clarity in your journey as you live your calling as well. So my name is Enoch Leffingwell and here at the Army of Youth, we are passionate about helping young people to identify their unique talents and to dedicate them to the Lord's service. And as I, um, as I was trying to consider what word of the year would I choose, I was um, at a time where I knew what God was calling me to do, but for a season I was going to go help out a friend and I ended up um, assisting him and I realized that the work that I was actively doing was not really the work that I believe God was calling me to do. And there was a level of like, there's fulfillment in the work that I was doing. I enjoyed what I did, but I knew that God was calling me to do something greater. God was calling me to help reach people in a different way. And, um, and the army of youth wasn't as prominent um, in like 2019, it was kind of done on the side, but I knew that things had to shift and um, I needed to be more in harmony with what heaven was calling me to do. And ha have you ever been in a time where you believe that what you were doing currently is not actually what God is calling you to do ultimately? Um, sometimes we, we come to these situations and these crossroads in life. I was at one of those times and I realized that the thing that I needed the most that I was really convicted on is I wanted to cultivate. I asked myself, so I'm, I am, I, I believe I was like 23, 24 at the time, and I was asking, what is something that I could learn? What characteristic trait or what skill could I master at the beginning of my life that would be able to have the greatest return on investment throughout my lifetime? That if I could understand and lay a foundation today, what could that be that would make one of the greatest impacts of my life that could carry with me for, for this day forward. And as I was looking at different possibilities, I, I thought of the word intentionality. Now for you, it might be a different answer, but for me, it was intentionality. I decided to focus on this one word, this concept, this theme. And it wasn't really just a word, it was more of an, an idea of having intention and, and being intentional, having a definite aim. I began, the whole Word of God began to open up and I began to see intentionality throughout the life of Jesus, being intentional with His conversations, being intentional with His, his relationships, being intentional with His prayers. I was like, wow, this is incredible. I never realized how definite of an aim Jesus had. And I had to ask myself, like, what does intentional mean to me? And how can I apply this to my life? What does that look like? And I realized Isaiah 46, 9 and 10, God says he declares the end from the beginning. And in many ways, we would do well to begin with the end in mind when we are accomplishing things, asking ourselves, why are we doing what we do? Because motive really matters. It truly does. Hebrews 4, 12 talks about the word of God is quick, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing asunder the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the hearts. There is so much that the Word of God comp comprises everything, even to the very intents and what are intentions of how we show up. And um, as I began to study, I, I uh, started to study, like, what does that look like? How could I better understand my intentions? How can I search my heart and, and seek and be more intentional with my life and my day and my time and, and the talents that God has entrusted me that I believe that we are stewards of? And so in the year uh, 2020 was really the first year that I've been so consistent in having a daily planner. And I, I looked around the world and I looked around in the marketplace and I saw that, that, you know, there's a lot of planners out there, but I didn't see any that were geared specifically towards Christians. Those who were Bible believers that was backed by science and the Bible 
that would give a biblical system for being more intentional with our life, to understanding, first of all, what is our calling in Christ, and second, to be actually doing that. So we set out as a ministry, as as my own problem trying to solve this, to, we set out to create the, uh, the products that we wish existed in the marketplace, and it wasn't there. So as we started to go, we started searching through the scriptures, what would God have us to do with our day? What would, what would God have us to do with our week? And how can we be intentional with our relationships? So we had a section every day asking the question, as in uh, Proverbs 27, 23, the Bible says, Be thou diligent to know the state of thy flocks, and look well to thy herds. You see, we all have a sphere of influence. We all have people that are entrusted to our care, that God is going to ask, Where is my flock, my beautiful flock that I have entrusted to you? But the question is, what are we going to say in that time? So we have a, a section here of the people we need to reach out to, that we need to encourage, and we need to strengthen, we need to help, we need to, we need to prompt, because maybe we're waiting on them, or maybe they need some support. And just being really intentional with our relationships, because let's be honest, if, if we are not intentional with who we spend our time with, then we start just reacting many times. We wake up on, we wake up, um, and we start the day very reactive. And I found myself a lot of times just going straight to the phone, looking at social media, seeing all the notifications and just reacting to the demands of life and all the messages and what people have. And I realized that it drained me. It lost my focus. It got me distracted. And really, uh, this year, this past year, this year of intention, God was helping me to wake up with intention, to reclaim my devotion, spend time with the Word of God, with the Lord who... Has, is revealing day by day his plans and unfolding the future to me in my life and what he has called me to do. And I realize if we're just reacting to everybody else's demands, then other people are setting your time, your life. And when you look at it, time is the stuff that life is made out of. And how we spend our time is how we spend our life. But are we spending our life doing what God would have us to do? Sometimes we so caught up with busy work that it starts to steal from our life's work. And having a, a, an account book, a daily account book that I could um, really set my intentions the night before and getting into the habit of, of seeing what does tomorrow's duties hold? What is that going to look like? What commitments have I made tomorrow? And what challenges am I going to face? And how would Christ handle these challenges? They really helped me to to see things in a totally different light and it allowed me tremendously and it made a great impact and really at the beginning of the year there is a an entire life assessment section on here and in the beginning of the year we mapped out what are the top three to five major outcomes that we wanted to accomplish as a ministry as individuals in the next 12 months so it was December 2019 first time in my life I've ever done it but we identified what are three to five things that we want to do by the end of December 2020. And I was like, this is risky. This is high level, like bigger concept things. And we're, and we're going to use our account book to break those down into smaller sections. So some quarterly quests to some monthly missions to some weekly wins so that we could be working towards a bigger picture and working towards our life's definite aim. And in doing that, I, am, I was actually shocked at how much we were able to do because as the days went by and the years, uh, as the months went by, we began to see where are we and where do we want to be? Where are we trying to go? It gave us clarity to the decisions of our daily duties. It gave us more clarity as to what to say yes to, what to say no to. Is it in harmony with what God is calling us to do this year? And as we did this more, we all grew. We grew more than we ever thought we could. And it's incredible to see the lives that are just being transformed through the army of youth and the young people that God has been raising up. And I love hearing the testimonies from the youth. They're saying that as they've been coming in contact with us, they're finding out more of their calling. They're finding more definite aim and they're understanding their purpose in life. Because here at the army of youth, we are at war against young people living aimless lives. Because we know that an aimless life is a living death. So we are on a rescue mission to go and seek and save that which is lost, to go help those that are just wandering throughout the day and help them to find the meaning and the reason of their existence in Christ Jesus. 
to identify what are their talents and dedicate them to the Lord's service. So we started to refine and we started to go through and we started to see. So that we were being intentional about keeping track of what are the things that we learn, the lessons that we learn. Because a lot of times we make mistakes. A lot of th- times we learn what not to do or what doesn't work. But few times do we actually like recall that when we need it most. And by having a, a daily biblical based journaling system, we've been able to journal, not only plan some of the things of the day, but journal the different uh, discoveries and revelations that God has given to us so that we can tuck those away when we need it the most. And and we've been able to implement a system for reviewing because I don't know about you, but for many years I take notes and I never even looked at them. I'm like, I don't know. Uh, or sometimes I take notes. I didn't even understand what I was trying to say. So it really discouraged me from taking notes. But this past year, we've been able to develop a system where no notes get left behind. Nothing gets lost. And we can review them at the times we need most and distill that. Because we realize that that reflection, that examination, 2 Corinthians 13, 5 tells us that examine yourselves to see whether you be in the faith. How would we know if we were reprobates except we examine daily? Paul was a huge advocate. Psalms 139, verse 23 and 24, it says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. See if there be any wicked way in me, and try me and know my thoughts, and lead me to the way everlasting. So this self-examination and searching of our intentions, of our motives, of our life, our thoughts, and discoveries is so profound for being able to see where are we and where does Christ want us to be and then work backwards to be able to identify what are the steps that we need to take today that will incrementally help us to get there as the path of the just shines more and more to the perfect day. And I'll say that having focus on intentionality for 2020 is what has led to um, one of the best year. It was the best year of my life, but it was one of the best decisions I've ever made. In uh, the morning, we have a question. In the morning conversation with God, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a prayer journal where we pr- jot down what are the prayer requests that we ask of God. I believe that God answers a lot more prayers than we think, but we don't really uh, take time to actually acknowledge. But being able to review and see, it's like, wow, I prayed for this. I prayed for wisdom on how to develop leaders on, uh, it was like June 6th, and then... Three weeks later, I found a book that was all about developing leaders. I was like, whoa, you mean to tell me that book that transformed my life, that opened my eyes, was a direct answer to my prayer three weeks ago? Otherwise, if I wasn't reviewing, I would have thought that, oh, it was just a a defining moment. It was really powerful and that helped me. But now, because I've documented my prayers, I begin to realize God loves me and he loves you too. And if we would take the time to journal our prayers and discoveries, then we would see how many things we have to be grateful for. But the second question we ask every single day to sh- bring that intention is, if, uh, what is one character trait that could describe the kind of person Christ wants me to be today? And that one word, that one thing, honestly, I've, I've put more than just one, but one thing I pray for every single day throughout the year 2020 was intentional. I want to be intentional I wanted to have clear direction. And with that, just praying for intentional, it it centered me, it grounded me, it helped me to be, to set my affections more on Christ and to realize what, who would Christ intend for me to be today? And how can I align my intentions with the intentions of Christ? It really helped me to stay focused this past year that has made such a tremendous difference. So what I can say by having a theme for the year is that It has been one of the better decisions in my life. I do plan to have a word of the year from this day forward. Um, I don't believe that there will ever be another year that I'm not going to do that uh, by God's grace. And if you're wondering for this year, what I've decided is that was a great chapter of my life. And not to say that I have fully mastered that, but after spending 12 months, I've gotten a lot better than I was 12 months ago. Now I'm thinking, what would be the next thing? What would be the next word that would make the biggest difference in my life that would help me the most? And as I thought about it, I realized focus. Focus is the word of my year 2021. This is the word that I realized that 
the foundation of everything, one of the most important decisions we can make of our life, of any moment of every day, is what do we choose to focus on right now? Because the law of focus states, what you focus on, you find, Matthew 7, 7. What you focus on grows, Galatians 6, 7. And what you focus on changes you in 2 Corinthians 3, 18. So whatever we, if we're focusing on where we want to go or if where we don't want to go, then it's, it's like, have you ever wondered that uh, when people have those really nice cars and they're driving on the country roads, how is it that they manage to find the single pole and smack into that in the middle of nowhere when, when they're like 150 miles spaced out? Because they're driving real fast and they see the pole and they're like, oh no, I don't want to hit the pole. And what do they do? They go right where they're focusing and boom, they smack into it. But instead of focusing on where we don't want to go, focus on where we do want to go. Focus on Christ. Focus on His character. Not on our faults and our challenges, our issues and our struggles and all our inabilities, but focus on Christ and His righteousness, Christ and His plan for your life. Focus on what is, focus on solutions rather than the problems that surround our soul. Focus on the growth rather than the challenge. And as we learn, as I learn to shift my focus and set my affection on things above and, and throughout this year, there's going to be multiple uh, facets or kind of subcategories that fall under this. But my theme, the one thing that I'm focusing on is I'm focusing on focusing. I want to know how to prioritize my focus in life. This is my prayer every day. I'm praying now for focus and I encourage you. What would your word of the year be? What would your word that would make the greatest impact in your life based on what season of life you're on, based on maybe your current weaknesses? How could you, this is how God is able to turn your current weakness into your greatest strength. When you start focusing on that, you will strengthen it. You'll find the promises in God's word. You start studying what is relevant and it just, the word of God becomes alive to you. And to me, I'm going to be using my daily account book to keep me focused and to help me to know what to prioritize and where to go and, and to better commune with God and to understand what is He saying in this season of life and what matters the most right now that I need to be really keeping my eye upon. And um, if you're interested in getting a copy of the Live Your Calling daily account book, I would love to get you a copy. All you have to do is go to the website thearmyofyouth.com forward slash account book and you can get your copy today. That's again thearmyofyouth.com forward slash account book and you can order yours today. If you want to have more intention in your life and to get more focus and know how to prioritize and have that communion that God is revealing your calling for your life and to have the actual steps to make that into a reality and collabor with God to see that to fruition. I encourage you to grab your copy of the Live Your Calling account book today. And if you thought this video was a blessing, then I encourage you to um, share this with other people. And I'm curious, let me know in the comments, what is your word of the year? Or what do you see are uh, types or, or some potential words that you may be looking at that may be that if you could choose one word of the year, what one word would make the greatest impact in your life in this season of life? I'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much for watching. And friends, remember, as always, that God doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the called.